how many of these big trends that we saw in 2022, arguably post pandemic, how many will continue in 2023? Oh, well, this remains a tight labor market, and so we can expect to see many of these trends continue. Uh, quits are still very, very elevated, uh, with people hopping industries. Uh, about half of people who are quitting are not staying in the same industry. They're moving into a different industry, so industry hopping will remain big. Uh, and we can expect you know, some degree of, of quiet quitting and quick quitting to go on. Uh, and that means that for employers, the big issue is employee experience. Okay, so, so speaking of ex employee experience, what exactly then do employers have to do to get those employees to want to sign on with them beyond just, say, one to two weeks or three weeks and, and keep them for, for the medium to longer term? So many employers feel like they have now maxed out on pay raises and perks. But the thing that we're seeing now uh, be the sort of deciding factor is speed in hiring. Uh, in a recent survey we did of people hired in the last six months, more than 90% said that with this current employer who just hired them, when they applied for that job, the employer got back to them within one week. One week, Dom. That means that companies are being sort of almost ludicrously fast with their hiring processes at the moment. They know that is the make or break issue right now. Okay, so if that's the make or break issue, then let's talk a little bit about the themes with regard to employment going into 2023 on the numbers front and in the, in the industry front. We've spoken a lot and, and analyzed a lot, Julia, with many guests about the fact that many of the layoffs that we've seen highly publicized are, are isolated to perhaps parts of the media industry, tech media, mm -hmm. telecom, so to speak, but that many of the blue collar jobs, industrial manufacturing jobs have been unaffected by layoffs. Is, is that fair to say? Is that the right assessment to make? You could even go further. So right now on Main Street, layoffs and terminations are lower by about 500,000 a month than normal. Typically, about 1.9 million people are laid off or fired every month in the U.S. economy. Right now, that's more like 1.4 million. And so these layoffs that are happening in tech are not only being uh, completely offset by the lack of layoffs everywhere else, uh, even you know, if you look within tech, many of these uh, layoffs are, are relatively small as a share of headcount and as a share of headcount growth over the past two years. So companies in tech are going back a couple of months when it comes to headcount. In the rest of the country, uh, they're surging ahead and, and making up lost ground. Do you expect that the jobs market will remain strong and resilient in 2023? Or are the threats of a recession going to make it so that Fed policy and, and policies with regard to slowing down the economy overall will ultimately have a negative impact on the jobs market next year? So right now, statistical agencies and the government and economists can't even figure out what happened with jobs in the second quarter, uh, let alone predict the future. Right? There's a disagreement between various uh, key government surveys uh, about whether the economy created 100,000 jobs in the second quarter of 2022 or a million jobs. So there's tremendous uncertainty about the past, let alone the future. But here's what we predict. Uh, number one, inflation is going to continue to slow. Goods prices are going to come down or hold steady while service price inflation is going to continue to slow. That means the Fed will be able to hold that terminal rate throughout the year at around 5 to 5.25%. They'll be content to be a bit patient even if inflation doesn't come right back down to 2% right away. You know, in past inflationary episodes, it's sometimes taken three to four years. Uh, and that means that prices will come down faster than wage growth. And so after two years of negative wage losses, uh, the US consumer is now going to see wage growth again, real wage growth, expanding purchasing power. And that means that the US consumer could actually continue to be resilient uh, and, uh, and that we may actually narrowly avoid a recession, despite some recession prediction models uh, that, that say that the, the likelihood of a recession is, is very high in the coming year.